Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Analog Circuits. So, in the last module, I had told you that we will be covering from this module onwards topics on DJT circuits. The first in the in this particular module, we will be covering the DC configuration, various circuits showing the DC configuration of a DJT, that is a bipolar junction transistor. So, the these circuits where we show the DC solution of the various nodes, voltages and uh, mesh currents when a BJT is connected uh, will tell us how to know what are the voltages and currents present at the various terminals of a BJT and how to connect it for various purposes. This is important because BJT is a device that needs correct DC voltages at its various terminals it would not work unless the voltages or currents at its various terminals are, are at a particular value. Now, these DC configurations are later on used for AC circuits, where an AC voltage or AC current is applied to the various terminals of a BJT. And then later on these circuit can be used for various purposes like as an amplifier or as a you know or as a comparator or as a differential amplifier or various other purposes. So, it is very important to know this DC configurations of the BJT. Now, also I want to emphasize that this is the mod first module where we are actually introducing one of the devices commonly used for analog circuits the bipolar junction transistor. So, far all the circuits that we had discussed were either using purely lumped elements like inductors, capacitors or resistors or using op amps. So, here though we would not cover the devices like MOSFETs or BJTs to a great extent in this course, but this particular module and the subsequent module after this will introduce you to some of the concepts that are used in actual circuits containing a device like BJT or MOSFET. So, let us see what is a BJT. So, the BJT, the construction of a BJT is something like this. This is of course, a simplified diagram that I am giving. Uh, the construction of a BJT is usually much more complicated than this. There are three distinct regions in a BJT, the emitter, the base, and the collector. Now, depending on how these three regions are doped, we have two types of BJTs. One is a P and P and there is a N P N. Okay. So, in a P and P transistor, the emitter and collector are doped with P type impurities, whether, whereas in a the NPN transistor, the emitter and collector are doped with N type impurities and the base is doped with a P type impurity. In the case of a PNP transistor, the base is doped with a N type impurity. The area of this or volume of this emitter and collector are usually not the same, they are usually different and uh, this since this construction is very similar to that of a diode, it might be tempting to construct an equivalent module, uh, equivalent model of this BJT like this. So, for example, if we want to find out an equivalent model of an N P N transistor, where the emitter is based is biased with N type impurities, collector is biased with N type impurities and base is biased with P type impurities then an equivalent model might be something like this. Okay. So, here is my emitter, this is my base, 
and this is my collector. The problem with this model is that this appears to show that the emitter and collector are totally independent of each other. And just this base emitter voltage and base to collector voltage is all that matters, but that is not the case because the emitter not only depends on the base voltage, it will also depend on the collector voltage. Now, I do not want to go into the details of the device physics, but if you are interested, you can look into a book like Streetman, Streetman's book on uh, BJTs and other semiconductor devices, where they give this treatment in detail of how the collector voltage also influences the emitter voltage and vice or emitter current and vice versa. Now, depending on how these voltages or how these two how these three regions are biased by bias I mean voltage biased. Uh, you can have three distinct regions of operation of a BJT. So, if you have your emitter base junction, if I write the E B G refers to emitter base junction and C B G, C B J refers to collector base junction. If the E B G, E B J and C B J both are reverse biased. Then the transistor is said to be in the cutoff region. If the E B J is forward biased and C B J is reverse biased, then the transistor is said to be in the active region. If both the E B J and C B J are forward biased, then the transistor is said to be in saturation region. Now, for this course, we shall consider only the case when the transistor is in the active region. Okay. Now, what is the symbol for a BJT? This might be well known, but still for sake of completeness, I shall be discussing a little bit about the symbol. So, for a BJT depending on whether it is of a NPN or PNP type, okay. so this is a the symbol of an NPN transistor and this is the symbol of a PNP transistor. Okay. The, this terminal represents the emitter. So, the terminal with the arrow is the emitter for both cases. The central terminal is the base again for both cases and the other one, the remaining one is the collector. So, suppose I C represents the collector current, I B represents the base current and I E represents the emitter current same here also, this is I E, this is uh, I B and this is I C. Okay. So, for both these cases, we can write I E is equal to I B plus I C. This follows from Kirchhoff's law. Now, this collector current and base current for both these types of these two types of transistors is related by a constant beta, which is given by I C upon I B. Usually, this I B the base current is a small quantity and the I C is a large quantity. Therefore, 
beta is quite large and typically a typical value of beta might be 100. Okay. Now, I c is can be written a formula for I c is like this. where V B E is the base to emitter voltage, I S is a constant, I capital I S is a constant and V T is known as thermal voltage this term V T is referred to as thermal voltage and is given by K T upon q and has a value where this k is the Boltzmann's constant and this has a value of 25 millivolt at room temperature. Okay. So, now that we know this relationship between I b and I c we can write my I B as equal to I C upon beta, which is equal to I S upon beta V T. The emitter current is also related to the collector current by another constant alpha and this turns out to be equal to I s upon alpha multiplied by E raised to V B E upon V T. Okay. Now, this V B E is applicable for a n p n transistor for a p n p transistor this v b e is replaced by v e b because for a p n p transistor the emitter is always at a higher voltage as compared to the base junction whereas for the n p n transistor the base is always at a higher voltage as compared to the emitter junction so, now that we have these basic relationships, we can proceed to the actual circuits. So, the first circuit we shall be considering is what we call the common emitter circuit. So, in a common emitter circuit, we have our B J T. We shall be discussing this circuit with a n p n transistor. Suppose V E represents the voltage at the emitter terminal, then what is this, what is the value of this V E? 
Now, this as I said this is a common emitter circuit and this kind of shows you how the voltages should be connected at the vari various terminals. So, my collector terminal is usually connected to the supply V C C through a resistance R C. The base also needs to have a, its own voltage supply. Usually, we add a biasing circuit to provide the required voltage at the base terminal. That is what we will be covering next. But for this particular circuit, we have directly connected a voltage V B B to the base terminal. And the emitter terminal is usually connected to the ground through this resistance R E. So, as I was saying the voltage at the emitter terminal V E is given by V B B minus the base to emitter voltage. Now, this B, V B E at room temperature comes out to be equal to 0.7 volts. Okay. So, then what should be our V E? It should be 4 minus 0.7 which is equal to 3.3 volts and what should be the emitter current? I E should be equal to the voltage across this resistance which is equal to V E minus 0 divided by R E. So, that comes out to be equal to 3.3 upon 3.3. So, this is 3.3 volts upon 3.3 kilo ohms and that is equal to 1 milli ampere. So, this is how you know we start solving uh, these problems. Now, suppose you are given an additional data that beta for this circuit is equal to 100, okay. then alpha is given by beta upon 1 plus beta. So, I leave this derivation of this particular formula as an exercise for you and this comes out to be nearly equal to 0.99. Okay. I C is given by alpha times I E and this comes out to be equal to. So, I E I found out to be equal to 1 milli ampere, alpha I found out to be 0 0.99. So, I C will be equal to 0 0.99 milli ampere. And then if I ask you to find out what is I B. So, we know that let me use another sheet. So, I have I C equal to 0 0.99 milli ampere I E equal to 1 milli ampere. Hence, I B will be equal to I E minus I C, which is equal to 0 0.01 milli ampere. Okay. Now, beta is equal to I C upon I B, sorry, I B and that is also verified it is nearly equal to 100. Okay. Now, if I ask you to find out what is the voltage at the collector terminal V C. So, V C will be given by V C C minus I C times R C which turns out to be equal to 10 minus 0 0.99 times 4.7 and I leave the evaluation of the final value to you as an exercise. 
So, this is how you know we do these uh, derivations. You first find out what is the uh, say the base current or the emitter current and then use the values of alpha and beta to find out the other currents. Once you find out all the currents, try to find out the voltages using simple uh, Kirchhoff's voltage laws on Kirchhoff's current laws. Let us consider another circuit. In this particular circuit, we will have instead of the base being directly connected to a source, we will have a biasing circuit providing the required voltage at the base terminal. So, this is a common emitter circuit with voltage bias circuit. So, the first part of this circuit is very similar to the circuit we just saw. Now, the advantage of this circuit is that you do not need two separate supplies, one for the base and one for the collector. The same collector supply V C C is provides the required voltage at both the base as well as the collector. Now, assuming that the current flowing to the base terminal is very small, these two resistances will provide a voltage divider type circuit and depending on the voltage division ratio, the required voltage will be provided here. Now, to actually know the actual voltage that appears across this, let us consider the Thevenin equivalent. Okay. So, what is the equivalent Thevenin voltage at this point? And that turns out to be the way to find out the Thevenin equivalent is you break the circuit here and find what is the voltage appearing here. So, then V B B the equivalent Thevenin voltage at this point turns out to be equal to V C C times R B 2 upon R B 1 plus R B 2 and this comes out to be equal to. So, if my V C C is equal to say 15 volts, this comes out to be equal to 5 volts. And what is R B B, the equivalent Thevenin resistance at this point? That will be simply the parallel combination of R B 1 and R B 2. So, my equivalent Thevenin resistance will be the parallel combination of R B 1 and R B 2 and that comes out to be equal to 33.3 kilo ohms. So, once we have found this out, we can now draw the equivalent circuit of the biasing network. So, instead of writing the biasing network, we can simply so just like the previous circuit we now have an equivalent voltage source vbb this remains equal to vcc this is rc this is re and this is R B B. 
okay. this is equal to 33.3 kilo ohms, V B B is equal to 5 volts, R C is equal to 5 k and R E is equal to 3 k. Okay. So, now if I want to calculate the individual currents, how do I do that? V B B is equal to I B R B B plus V B E plus I E R E. Okay. Now, I B is equal to I E upon B 1 plus beta. Therefore, if I substitute this value of I B into the previous equation, okay. so I am substituting this value of I B into this equation, then what I get is, then if I solve for I E, what I will get is, And if I plug in the values, then it comes out to be so V B B is 5 volts, V B is 0.7 volts, R E is 3 kilo ohms, and R B B is 33.3, beta is 100, and this comes out to be equal to 1.29 milliampere. Next, if I want to find out the value of V B, that is the voltage at the base terminal, I know that V B is equal to V B E plus I E times R E. So, what I mean is that the voltage, this voltage is the voltage between the base and emitter junction and with the voltage drop of R E across R E added to it. So, that is given by this formula and that comes out to be equal to 0 0.7. I have just calculated I E to be equal to 1.29 milliampere and R E is equal to 3 kilo ohms. This turns out to be equal to 4.57 volts. We can go on like this, you know, for various other node voltages and currents. For example, let if we if I want to find out what is the voltage at the collector terminal, VC, that is equal to VCC minus IC times RC, and this comes out to be equal to 15 minus 1.28. Times 5, which is equal to 8.6 volt. Here, I C was obtained from this formula. And that came out to be equal to 1.8 milliampere this is what I have substituted here. So, this way, so in summary, uh, we can you know the circuit, the two circuits that I sh showed you in this uh, module are some of the basic DC circuits that are used for uh, connecting a BJT. The one that I showed you here is the common source, common emitter configuration. We also have common base configuration and common collector configuration. Maybe a more advanced course on BJT will help you understand what the other two circuits are. But the main point is that whichever be the configuration, the techniques 
used for finding out the DC voltages and DC currents at the various terminals are similar to what I showed you in this module. These circuits with their proper node voltages and branch currents the, that is the base emitter and collector currents, once they are set up to these circuits we can then apply our AC signals and make the BJT perform various functions like that of an amplifier or a differential amplifier or a comparator or various other purposes for which a BJT is used. In the next module, I will be covering some topics on BJT modeling and also introduce you to what are known as current mirrors. Thank you.